two parties enter a lease with a liquidated damages clause that one party foolishly assumes is liquid gold in TAL Financial versus CSC Consulting. TAL Financial contracted with Onward. Under the agreement, Onward leased office equipment from Financial. Onward leased the equipment for 36 months. In certain circumstances, the contract could be canceled with a written 90-day notice. The lease required payment of reasonable attorney's fees in the event of a breach. The lease included a liquidated damages clause if Onward defaulted. The clause specified that its intent wasn't to punish and required Onward to pay 18% of financials cost to acquire the leased equipment and all unpaid rent, including future rent. Onward merged with CSC Consulting. Consulting took over the lease and later decided to move all the staff who worked in Onward's original office location and used the leased equipment. In the move, Consulting threw out most of the leased equipment and lost the lease agreement. Consulting asked for a copy from Financial, but Financial was very slow to provide it, instead sending a bill for the outstanding amount. Finally, Consulting canceled the lease. Financial didn't want its equipment back, but wanted over $112,000 in liquidated damages. Consulting tried to negotiate a settlement, but Financial refused. Consulting didn't pay, so Financial sued. After a bench trial, the judge awarded Financial less than $10,000 for the breach because Financial didn't give enough notice before stopping the monthly payments. The court also awarded Financial attorney's fees pursuant to the lease. However, the judge decided that the liquidated damages clause wasn't enforceable. Financial appealed, arguing the judge didn't correctly calculate the damages.